If you have spent any length of time in the United States, you owe it to yourself to play the 1985 arcade classic, Paperboy. In it, you assume the role of a preteen boy tasked with completing his daily paper route. For whatever reason, your hero's beat is a particularly rough neighborhood. Its streets teem with aggressive drivers who would rather hit a cyclist than their brakes. On the sidewalks, bratty children steer kamikaze RC cars into passers-by. Dare I say it, they're like modern-day drone pilots in their larval forms. Elsewhere, skateboarding adrenaline junkies find their greatest thrill in demolishing live obstacles like your paperboy. And even in some cases, your character will be accosted by a knife-wielding madman who comes charging out of a house and pursues you at tremendous speeds, inevitably catching your hero and robbing him of a precious life. Taken as a whole, the game makes for an effective satire of Reagan-era America. It captures the needless paranoia of the suburbs, where people fear the harm some stranger or foreign power will inflict on them without realizing the vanity, in all senses of the word, behind such a phobia. It shows the violence and cruelty of the average American percolating behind the facade of white picket fences and well-maintained lawns. Most importantly, it reveals how far some people will go to make a buck or be compelled to go for socio-economic reasons beyond their control. It would be troubling to consider these situations if the game didn't make it all so damn funny. Odds are, you will probably be laughing too much while playing to think about many of the concerns the game raises. Perhaps it succeeds a little too well at its own satirical objectives. You would be forgiven for assuming that the same merry cynicism found in Paperboy would carry over to its 90s console sequel, Paperboy 2. Yes, indeed, the second entry in the series contained every bit as much unnecessary peril and consequent weird humor as the first. You guide your choice of Paperboy or Paper Girl through a suburban gauntlet featuring a whole new cast of memorable hostiles. A hermit holed up in a moat-rained castle bombards you with cannon fire as you pass. Overzealous guard dogs chase you down the street. Roasting pigs knocked off the spit by a misfired newspaper do the same, evidently being grilled alive before your intervention, and none too happy with your interference. Runaway baby carriages, in a nod to the overpopulation worries of the modern world, will mow you down if you are not attentive enough. Scarecrows, once hit with a paper, break from their stakes and ambush you, one hand raised in a fascist salute all the while. The absurdity in Paperboy 2 runs high thanks to the game's colorful cast. Although, maybe colorful is not the right word. As you play through the opening stages of Paperboy 2, you will notice one character who does not seem to belong, for he is literally and figuratively anything but colorful. He will first catch your eye because his palette is without color. He is the only person in the game rendered entirely in monochrome. He wears a gray sweatsuit. His neat and unremarkable hair is black. His stark white skin, however, is especially arresting given the more nuanced flesh tones seen everywhere else in the game. His actions, too, are comparably bland. If left undisturbed, the figure in gray simply walks down his driveway, deposits a garbage can at the curb, then turns around and walks back into his house. If struck with a paper, he only freezes in his tracks. 
no attacks, and no surprises. He is shockingly mundane in this world of cannons and mobile scarecrows. If you have some knowledge of 90s news curiosities, you might be able to excavate the unusual case of one Dennis R. from your memory banks. Assuming the national news outlets had the story straight and reported it accordingly, Mr. R. was an actuary or some other specialist whose profession hinges on the unchallenged yet speculous assumption that the future will be like the past, who woke up one night and dismembered his infant twin sons and his wife of eight years. He then brought their remains to the curb in a metal garbage can alongside all the other refuse of suburban life. The mechanical arm of the waste collection truck had not detected the can's abnormal weight, and the landfill too was none the wiser. It was entirely possible that no one would have noticed the absence of Mrs. R and her children had the library not begun to seek compensation for a long overdue book that Mrs. R never had the chance to return. Alas, Mr. R was never properly sentenced, and he was killed in prison by other inmates before his trial could be finished. Recalling this story, you might begin to sense a resemblance between the late Mr. R and the figure in gray. Indeed, after a courtesy image search for his photograph on the internet, you would be impressed by how uncanny a likeness a few pixels can produce. You might even begin to suspect that the satire of the Paperboy series is alive and well in the second installment. Here, the game designers have given you a world of crime, violence, fright, and yet the most horrible thing in it is something as innocuous as a man taking out his trash. Here, all the paranoid suburbanites target a kid on a bicycle, as if he or she posed any actual threat, while the real danger lurks next door. You might speculate that Paperboy 2 is a satire of complacency, where prosperity and habit inure the average American against diligence and introspection, where the idealized image of the suburb discourages its residents from looking beyond the glistening veneer of civilization and scrutinizing themselves or others. Even you, the attentive player, were fooled. Did you think to inspect the gray figure's garbage can for pixelated limbs? Of course not! Why would you? The world you find yourself in does little to suggest that you should have. Therefore, through the inclusion of this nonchalant figure in gray, the game makes you conflict in the poisonous mindsets that suburban America incubates. A mature critique indeed for such an early video game. Yet, if you were to praise the developers of Paperboy 2 for their clever stunt, not one of them would take credit for it. For none of them would admit to drawing or programming the figure in gray. In fact, none of them would even remember putting him into the game.